everybody, it's me Alexa and today we're going to be talking about Jali Kadu. So this is India's official submission to the Oscars. I mean, it hasn't been announced whether or not it'll be nominated yet, but that's the film that they've submitted for consideration. So whenever I heard that, I was like, okay, let's move that higher on the watch list so you can see what it's all about. Why did they send it over? You know, what makes it so great? Um, so I put in some polls on the Patreon, and for the monthly movie club this month, they decided to vote for this film. There's also a full movie commentary for it over on the Patreon, where I give a full audio commentary as I watch the film for the first time. Really quick before I start talking about my thoughts, uh, the film is of course directed by Lijo Joe's Pella Seri, and it was actually written by S. Harish and R. J. Kumar, and it's actually based on a short story written by S. Harish. One other thing before we jump in, this is of course a spoiler-free review overall. I will have a quick spoiler section uh, from what I have on screen here because there's two things that I just want to mention um, that go into my biggest issue that are big spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie and want to know if you should watch it, feel free to keep watching because I won't be giving away any spoilers besides during this timestamp and I'll make sure to give a warning before I go into it so you can go ahead and skip to after them for final thoughts. So I'm gonna start off a little blunt. I'm gonna just give you a little one sentence of my thoughts, uh, and then I'll explain it, okay? So hopefully you'll understand why I feel that way about it by the end of the video. Um, but, quick little summary, I didn't like it. <laughs> um, that not to say there aren't positive things about it. I'm going to, you see, I'm gonna give it lots of compliments throughout this review, but... I'm also gonna give it some not compliments, if you know what I mean. Honestly, the most frustrating thing about the film is the fact that I understand the message, and I understand what they were trying to do. I can see it. I can see what they wanted to accomplish with this film, but they just did not succeed, in my opinion. And that's always really just disappointing and frustrating a little, because it's like, I want them to succeed so bad. I want the movie to be good. And the whole movie, I was trying to, like, not be too nitpicky. I'm like, all right, you know, let's try and be more positive about it. But just continually, it was giving me the same issues and same problems over and over again that I had with it, that it just built up where I'm like, I... I don't like this movie. I tried, but I don't like it. <laughs> Alright, so let's get down to what this movie is about. So the whole plot of the film is there is this buffalo in a village, and right before it's about to be butchered for meat, it escapes and it kind of wreaks havoc on the village, and so it prompts all the villagers to hunt after it to try and catch it and kill it. And that's the whole film. <laughs> so, I mean, that's an intriguing premise. I knew that was the plot going into it. I'm not gonna lie, I did assume that there was gonna be a bit more to it than that, but, I mean, there's a lot of other messages and underlying, you know, meanings and such in it, but that's the overall plot of it, is just people finding this buffalo. And, uh, <laughs> see, my issue with that is I don't get why they need to capture the buffalo. <laughs> So this was an issue for me for the whole hour and 30 minutes was I, like, they kept saying it's going to escape into the forest and you catch it before it does that because it keeps breaking things. And I'm like, why don't you just chase it into the forest then so it's gone and it stops breaking things? I did, like, morally and logically, it didn't make sense for them to keep chasing it the entire time. So that was a little hard for me, and I, I understand it's a movie, you know, not everything has to be 100% realistic, um, but I'll go into a bit more of specifics about why that was such an issue for me throughout the film. So as I said before, though, I do have some positives, so I'm going to try and sprinkle back and forth between them so I'm not overly negative or more positive than I actually feel about it. I'm going to try and give a nice little healthy uh, balance between the two. Um, so here's a quick little positive was the music. I will say the score and sound design was extremely well done all throughout. Uh, the music was done by Prashant uh, Palai, and they did a great job. Uh, the effects that they had in they really, they took, like, shots that were maybe not creepy, made them creepy with the score, or, like, you know, they created emotions and such that were sometimes contradictory to what was happening on screen by utilizing a really well-done score, and that, that was very effective and well done. So alongside the music, there were a lot of really beautiful shots in this. There were, like, there were some moments where I was like, ooh, like, multiple times through, I was like, that's a nice little look, but then... There were just so, so, so many extreme close-up insert shots, and those can be so effective. They can really add to the story, but many of them had nothing to do with the story. <laughs> there's many examples all throughout, but there's one that just sticks out to me. It was just like in between two scenes, um, it's a transition between them. It just had this extreme close-up of a plant, and that was it. That was, that was the transition, and it didn't add to the film, 
it would look nice. I, I mean, it was a pretty shot, but I don't understand it was there. And I was kept waiting for something to make those kind of shots make sense and like have an impact on why they're there in the story, but they just didn't. They were just there. It felt like, it felt like someone just took a camera, went out and got a bunch of pretty shots and then was like, here, let's see where we can throw them in because they look nice. And that led me to feel a lot. And I, I don't mean this meanly, but I also do. And I can say this because I've made them. It made me feel like at many times I was watching like an angsty student film. And I've made those, I've made angsty student films like when I was at school and stuff. So I don't mean that in like the meanest way, but it felt like constantly, and there's, this goes into more than just cinematography, but the cinematography was the main uh, example of it with just like, there are so many just like unnecessary shots and unnecessary moments. There are so many things inserted in that simply did not move forward the story. Because I don't mind if you want to slow down your movie by adding in a few more scenes and stuff like that can be really effective, but it has to be moving your story forward in some way. You can't just have random shots of things that add nothing. Because of those shots and a few other things, it also made the pacing of the movie just hard to watch at times. Like, this movie is only an hour and a half long, but I swear it felt like it was at least two and a half hours when watching it, and that's not a great thing. Like, sometimes movies do feel longer than they are, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, because sometimes it's because they just fit so much into it, it's so well done that you're like, wow, it seems like that should have been like two hours because so much happened, but it was so good and it was only an hour and a half. Um, that can be really effective, but in this, it felt like it was two and a half hours long, but enough stuff happened in it only to last for like a 20 minute short film. <laughs> Like, I feel like this would be a really effective short film if you cut out, like, a whole bunch of it and just made it, like, a 20-minute short film. Really great. Maybe even 30 minutes, you know, I'll give it that. That could be a really impactful thing. But trying to take this very simple story and, um, I mean, it's a deep meaning behind it, of course, but it's overall a simple little story and make it an hour and a half was just, it just didn't quite work. And... It's kind of a hard movie to describe because it both had a very distinct message and like hit you over the head with it a couple times while also being extremely vague for the vast majority of it. And so it, like, it was just a little weird. And in my opinion, that kind of comes back to the fact that I think that it was trying too hard to feel realistic. And I'm, I like me some realistic films like, you know, Kumbulangi Nights, amazing, you know what I mean? Like there's some really great realistic films. So you can do realistic films really well and have it have that impact, but due to uh, multiple issues, but I think the main ones being one, the pacing that I already discussed before, and also the characters. Um, this is another thing, I appreciate that they didn't have one main character. I think that that was a cool concept, and I do um, admire that attempt at having like no one main character. However, in the attempts in doing so, they sim instead of just developing many characters, so you're not sure who's the main one, they just didn't develop anyone. So I felt very disconnected to every character. I did not understand the motivations of a single character. And even some, like, have some, you know, conversations and you get a little bit of backstory on some of them. But then it, like, will have some sort of uh, moment in their interaction. I'm trying to say not a spoiler and say this. I'll, I'll go into a little bit more in the spoiler section, what I mean here. Um, but to vaguely say it <laughs> without reading the movie. So some, like, interaction between characters that happen we were like, I could see the small seeds leading up to this, but they just were not um, planted enough for me to really care about this happening now. And that's really all I can say about spoilers. <laughs> that's not to say the actors didn't do a great job. I want to make very clear that I think the actors all did a spectacular job with what they were given. It's just that they were not given any character development. They were not given any moments where we could understand the character. And that made it so that it was very hard to connect with the film through the characters. And that kind of goes back to my point from the beginning of the review where I was talking about how I didn't understand why they kept chasing this buffalo. And it kind of wraps back to that because none of the characters are developed. Like, I don't know any of those characters. I could not describe to you the personality traits, really, of those characters besides a few surface level ones that you would get in a first introduction to a person. And that's not a great thing to feel after watching an entire film to feel like you don't know a single character. So I get what they're going for by having no main character and making it just like a big ensemble, but you have to still develop those ensemble characters. And it simply did not do that. Before we go into spoilers really fast, I do want to say one more big positive. This is a huge positive for the film, and it was um, the VFX on the buffalo. Now, there were some shots of the buffalo that I wasn't a huge fan of, like some of the cinematography choices around it, but 
And they did show the buffalo, um, and many of the shots were great. Uh, they looked so realistic. I, for the large part of the film, if you listen to the commentary you can hear, I, I was like, is that real or not? <laughs> I was constantly trying to make because I'm like, in that scene it looked like it might have been like a fake or an animatronic, but in this scene it looks like it's real. And so I was constantly going back and forth in my head throughout, and I was like, I really hope it's not a real one. And I ended up looking it up during the film because I'm like, if they hurt this and I'm unaware if it's real or not, I'm gonna get angry, so I gotta search this. Um, <laughs> so I looked it up and it was entirely fake all animatronics and vfx and they did a really really spectacular job at that there was one scene where the vfx wasn't as good near the end that i can't talk about it all without spoiling it but you'll know what i'm talking about. it's like one of the last scenes before like the end it's like the second to last scene before the end of the whole film but in that there's a bit of rough vfx but the bull was spectacular i get full props to that it was really really well done i constantly didn't know if it was real or not which is very impressive uh so big props to that. Warning, we're about to go into spoilers. Click ahead to whatever time I have on screen if you don't want spoilers, because I'm gonna go into them. They're gonna be pretty big, so skip on ahead if you still want to watch the movie without spoilers, because I'll ruin it for you if you don't. <laughs> I'm gonna go into the ending, which is the main spoilery part I want to talk about, but really quickly I just want to elaborate on what I was talking about before with the character development. Um, the specifically, there's a few instances of it, but the one I was specifically talking about was Antony and Kutachan. Um, their whole feud with each other, it's like hinted at occasionally in the background, but it's just not developed enough for when they start fighting at the end, it felt very undeserved. Um, it felt very out of place, um, because I knew, like, they like slightly been feuding the whole time, but it didn't have enough of an escalation for that huge moment to make sense. And like we didn't even really get to see Kutachan at all. Like I didn't think that he had a huge problem with the other guy. He seemed like mad at him, but I didn't think he was ready wanting to kill him. Like that's the only reason he came back was to kill him, not even to get the buffalo. I did not get that vibe from the character or from what they showed us of the character. So to get to that point, it felt very, it didn't feel sudden because it did make sense with the little seeds that they placed. I got it, but it just, it felt undeserved. It felt like there wasn't enough build up to that to make that be the moment that they wanted it to be. But Kudachan and Anthony did a great job acting, especially Kudachan, you see him acting like the bull. It was very obvious, um, like, you know, charging at stuff. Like he charged at the crop and like ran into it just like a bull. And he did a really great job with the acting of that. Um, just, again, it just wasn't given enough to be able to make that moment, uh, feel deserved enough. Now the main spoilery thing I want to talk about is the ending. Um, two things to do with the ending. One is not right at the end, but like semi-close to the end as we're getting to the, like, slight build up to the climax, which the whole movie is build up to the climax. But like closer to the end, there's a man states, like explicitly says like, they may be on two legs, but they're the real beasts. Um, he doesn't, that's, uh, I'm paraphrasing it, but he explicitly states the message of the film. And that, that really uh, took away from my opinion of the film. Because, so it's very artsy, you know what I mean? Like all the shots and stuff, it has like a very high like artsy experimental feel to it um, throughout. And then just being so blunt and telling you exactly what the meaning of it is, I felt really took away from that. Like if you're gonna go the artsy route, you have to commit. Because not everyone's gonna like that kind of film. And I don't like I don't really care for that kind of film but I'll have a lot of respect for the movies if they're still done well but having that moment where it explicitly told me exactly like the whole point of the entire movie like why did I even watch this for an hour and a half but I'm gonna have this woman tell me the exact <laughs> message that I'm supposed to get from it in like two seconds <laughs> it made the rest of the film feel kind of pointless watching because I'm like the whole point of watching it is so I can learn that and here you are just telling me it and then again, at the very, very end, they like, it seemed like it's gonna end completely, and then it comes back with that caveman sequence, which was just a complete on the nose, like, oh, look, they're beasts. Like, you know, it was, there's no uh, room for interpretation anymore. There's no room for, um, like, having your own thoughts on it. It's just exactly what you're supposed to feel is shoved down your throat, which I felt that both those scenes were just not needed. Because you got that message well enough from the rest of the film where people could still have their own interpretation and it would make it more better of the type of film that it's trying to be. But instead, it felt like it had to drive home that message, had to make sure everyone knows exactly what it's thinking. So it almost made me feel like those two scenes or something that they added, like in post rewatching it, they're like, I feel like the message isn't clear enough. What can we do to make it clearer? And then they're like, oh, let's tell them it and then show them it with no room for interpretation. And so that kind of adds to the fact that, because honestly, you take away those two scenes, I think you can still get the message, but it would feel a little vague because of how the story was paced and how the story was told. 
and the lack of character development and many, you know, all the different little things that I've talked about throughout this adding together to make it so that it just, while it has a pointed point to it, it also feels vague. Um, and I almost would have preferred, though, if they committed to that vagueness, let people have their own interpretation of it, you know? Because it's still pretty on the nose at the end and stuff, whenever they're all... That's the VFX works that was bad, the piled up bodies, by the way. Um, it... <laughs> like, during that, it's pretty obvious what they're comparing it to. You know, it's pretty obvious what's happening here. Look at the film Tumbad that I watched. It's another, you know, it's a very different film than this, but it's another kind of, like, weirder film, as I like to call them. They're, like, experimentally, like, artsy. There's a lot of words you can call it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's different than the normal stories that you watch, you know, like the typical narrative films. And so... I still, while I didn't like Tumbad, I had a huge amount of respect for it because it had a message, it delivered it well, and you know, it had a purpose to it. But this film, while it does have a very big purpose to it, it just wasn't handled or delivered well, so it makes me just not really enjoy it. And though it does have positive things, it had great music, great acting, some really beautiful cinematography, and some great moments in it, it just overall added up together to make something that I felt was just disappointing. Now we're to the real question, I don't know if anyone's asking it, um, but I'm gonna answer it anyways. <laughs> Do I feel like Dali Katu was the right choice for India to send over for the Oscars? And again, to be blunt, I'm gonna say no. I just don't feel like it represented Indian cinema well enough to be the right submission for this year. And I can even think of, I didn't even see every movie that came out last year, and I can think of other ones that would have been a better submission, in my opinion. Again, I'm just me, people can disagree, all of this is just my opinion, but from my thoughts and my views, I mean, like, sorry, Patru would have been a better choice with its compelling characters and a motivating story, or maybe even See You Soon, um, which is another Malayalam film where, because the innovative use of different techniques during quarantine, uh, when, you know, traditional filmmaking was not available, that was so innovative and they had so creative that I could see that being a really great choice. Um, and there's many others, you know, I'm not going to list all of the amazing films that came out last year because that would take a really long time, but... There were other options that would have better represented Indian cinema, I think, than Jolly Katu. And I'm not positive why it was chosen. I don't know what discussions happened, what choices were made. But personally, I, I don't think it was necessarily the right choice. Based on all that, you can probably guess it's not going to be in one of my top categories in the shark rating. Um, but it's not in the bottom one. You know, I almost, I, I did consider putting it in Whale Shark. I'm not going to lie to you guys, but I said no. It does have some positives, Alexa. You gotta focus, look at it, you know, a bit more objectively, I guess. <laughs> Though my shark rating is still very subjective, I want to make that clear. Um, but it's going to be in the second to bottom category, which is Goblin Shark. So, yeah. I mean, I think I said it all in this video. As I've said, this film did have good things in it. It had great the effects on the buffalo, it had the acting, the music, and the cinematography overall was very beautiful. But just with pacing issues, lack of character development, and a story that simply didn't work in the way that it was uh, portrayed, uh, the film just, for me, fell a bit flat. But yeah, that's all I really have to say about Deli Katu. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know all of your thoughts on the movie down below in the comments. If you liked the movie, why did you like it? If you didn't like it, why didn't you like it? Let me know in the comments down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe. And hope you all are staying safe out there and have an absolutely amazing day. Bye! Thank you.